Hello, friend. Once again, welcome to another episode of Forsaking My Father's Religion. My name is Mohammed Faridi. I'm the host of Forsaking My Father's Religion because I forsook my father's religion. I realized after I heard about Christianity that God doesn't have grandkids. He has kids, only kids. I had to forsake my father's religion. In my context and my, in my brother's context, it is Islam, but we forsook our father's religion and embrace Christianity, or you could see it as Christ embraced us and brought us into his uh, beloved, beautiful kingdom. Now, one day I was a slave to Allah, but now I'm a son of the Most High God. What an amazing, amazing journey. If you would like to get one of the copies of my book called Forsaking My Father's Religion, you can go to our website. It is right in my name, iranchristians.org. You can sign up there. Uh, there's a tab called free book you can sign up and uh, if you're in the u.s we'll send you a hard copy and if you're outside of the united states we'll send you one electronically and um, as you know the last two weeks of march i was in middle east distributing bibles and we saw the salvations of 375 muslims uh, all of islam cannot um, uh, claim all of islam cannot claim that they have seen the salvations of 375 Muslims in two weeks because there is no salvation in Islam. The conversion is so, they call it the revert to Islam. It is nothing, absolutely nothing to going from a hole to a well. That's all it is. A blind man cannot lead another blind man. A dead man cannot lead another dead man. They're both dead. They would, they're already in a hole. But our Lord, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ is risen, alive and well, seated at the right hand of his Father in heavenly places. And he is, he is the one that called himself the way, the truth, and life. And he is the one that can lead you to all righteousness. And what he has done for us is amazing. And my brother Joseph is with us today. And he's going to share his testimony, his powerful testimony. I read his bio yesterday powerful testimony is going to share but if you want to get the free book go to our website and if you want to um, get our newsletter i wrote a newsletter um beautiful or a feed of those who carry the gospel or the or the good tidings or the glad tidings so if you want to get our newsletter go there and sign up but now it's time for my brother to share his powerful testimony uh he is lebanese now lives in Germany, but he has a very, very powerful uh, testimony. Brother, go ahead and share what the Lord has done for you and where you come from. Thank you, brother, for this opportunity. Um, pardon me, because uh, English is not my mother tongue, so maybe sometimes I'm going to make some mistakes. And uh, also, I have a little cold, so if I look tired, don't wonder. Um, yeah, where can I start? I think you um, start here. Me, I, my English is my third language, so don't feel bad about it. Um, I make mistakes, but we have viewers from all over the world. Somebody watching from Tanzania, Germany, right at this moment, um, New Zealand, South Africa. They understand. They're gracious. It, we, we shouldn't be perfect that we give it to God. Whatever we are, God, we're available. So go ahead and uh, share where you come from, brother. Yes. Uh, what was life um, before Christ? I was born in Lebanon and we came directly from Beirut as refugees, like many other Lebanese families uh, during the Civil War. And uh, the Germans were amazingly nice to us. They, you know, we lived first, the first, I think, six or seven years in a village, like 20 miles far away from the next city. They gave us a big house with a big garden, everything. They even gave us a lot of money. It's like, three or four thousand in dollar you would say three thousand dollars just to buy food um, so everything which no one would do for us no muslim and no other country would do this for us and um, yet my family was totally ungrateful you know uh, they very early started in crimes they insulted the germans they always were talking bad about Christians, about uh, the Kafirun. <laughs> they were saying they are all like Jews and we have to, they, they have to serve us. Uh, it's okay to abuse them. And I was totally different. I, I had 
I have six brothers, five sisters, uh, and other two of my siblings died in Lebanon. Um, so it's a big family. And also I had, of course, cousins uh, in, in Germany. So it was a big family. And uh, I started very, in the young age, like nine or 10, you know, when they uh, were trying to teach me the Islam, the prayers, uh, all the stuff, you know, like Ramadan, fasting and eating. And um, I was asking normal questions like, what does my name Yusuf? What does it mean? We don't know. What does Masih mean? We don't know. What does Ibrahim? What does uh, Miriam? We don't know. But Mohammed, we know. How comes we know what Mohammed means, but we don't know what uh, such an important name like Isa, Masih, uh, Miriam, Ibrahim, uh, no one could answer me. It's important. It's just a name. And uh, so every time when they were introducing me to new stuff, like for example, how many raka in, in, in the prayers, like, you know, in, in the sunrise prayer, in the noon prayer, in the afternoon prayer, in the evening prayer. And I was like, so why is it so important for Allah uh, that we have to do a special amount of raka? And why uh, we have to pray five times a day when the Quran says we have to pray only two times. And they say, yes, it's, it's sunnah. It's sunnah wa rasulu, and you have to follow it. And if you don't follow it, then you are not a Muslim. Uh, I said, but isn't it the word of Allah more important than the word of Muhammad? And he said, Yes, of course, but uh, Allah said you have to follow the Prophet. And every time they were saying Prophet Muhammad, said, we have to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. I was like, and imagine I was like nine or ten years and asking why Allah prays on Muhammad, why I have to say uh, the angels and Allah pray on Muhammad. That doesn't make sense to me. Because how can God, and at, at that time I believed that Allah means God, because you grow up from childhood, you only say uh, Allah, even so you know that God means Ilah, Ilahana. So the same words like in Aramaic and Hebrew, where they say also Ilahi, Eloa, um, it didn't make sense to me. But at that time I didn't question Allah. For me, Allah meant God. And, you know, every time I was asking this stuff, they just insulted me, they beat me up, they, uh, you know, they broke my nose, say my eardrums was exploded two times from the beatings that I get. And uh, I remember one day when I went to my father and I told him, Dad, Baba, I want to ask you, I don't understand it, why Allah prays Brother, I think your earbuds battery is going out. Yeah. Yeah, you can um, change that. I think the battery is going out. Praise the Lord. Folks, it's a live show and these things happen, but um, it's going to be fixed. It's going to be good. You're hearing his powerful testimony. And... Um, um, I would love to hear um, why would you be why why would they beat you for asking question in Islam? So it's always fascinating for me. Um, Omar, go ahead. I didn't know, and I went to my father, you know, and I was uh, I was afraid of my father because you know he was the head of this criminal gang, and uh, for me he was uh, you know he always punished for every stupid or well, what he thought it was a stupid question. So. He, he grabbed me by the hair, you know, he smashed me against the wall and he started beating me until my nose was bleeding, my mouth was bleeding. And then he dragged me by the hair. I was 10. And we had a, um, in the underground, in the basement, there was a little heating room, like two by three meters. So only space for this big machine. And he threw me down the, the, the cement stairs and he locked me up in this little room for two days and he told my mom no one is allowed to go down 
to talk to him, you can only give him one time a day water. So I had to sleep on the ground for two days just because I asked him, why do we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It doesn't make sense to me. And uh, he didn't care, you know, he was so angry. It was just like a demon came out of him and he was so possessed and he didn't know what to answer. And I think that made him so angry. And after the two days, you know, my brothers were laughing at me. Look at him, this idiot, how he looks like. And, and that was all the time. And my mom told me then, look, if you have questions, don't ask your father, don't ask your brothers, go to the sheikh in the mosque or call your sido, which is also a sheikh in Lebanon. You can call him. And I was wondering why such easy questions like the names, like why do we say we pray on Muhammad and it doesn't make sense. And how old were you at this time, brother? I think I was nine, maybe 10 years old. And, uh, and, and they started to hate me more and more, you know, not my sister, because I have an amazing relationship to my sister. I was always protecting them because they were also mistreated very bad by my brothers and my, my father, because they uh, first they didn't allow him to go to school. So the police came many times to our house and took them to, to the school. They were forced to wear the hijab. And when someone asked them, they had to say, it's our free will. It's uh, we want to do this. It's our religion and we love to wear it. But uh, I know that my sisters in school, you know, they were taking it up. But sometimes my brothers, they saw them and were telling my father. Uh, so they got beaten up very terribly. So you could say there was not one week where we didn't have to go to the ambulance or to the doctor. Um, and I remember one day my brother took me with him to a, to a lake. He told me, I want to show you something beautiful. It was in Germany. And I was standing on the lake. He was behind me. And I heard some German screaming like, uh, nein, nein, was machst du da? What are you doing there? And well, I turned around and I didn't know what was happening. And I just felt something run liquid on, on my neck. And I touched it and it was blood. And uh, my, my brother, my older brother, he, he threw a stone while I was watching the lake on my head. And they came to help me, these, these Germans. They took me with them to, into a, to the car. They brought me to the... Uh, ambulance and they had you know to get st stitches and the police came and asked him he said no no it was just fun i wanted to throw a stone on the lake to see how it and at that time i didn't really realize how much they how much they hated me their little brother and uh so what I was doing then, I started to read the Quran in, in three languages, in three ways. You know, I went to the library in Germany and there was a Quran. It was written in Arabic. It was written in, in German and it was also written in uh, German, in Roman letters, you say, so that you could read the Arabic because I was not able to read Arabic. I, the only way I could uh, understand the uh, Quran was listening to the Quran on the Arabic channels on TV or through the cassette player. Um, and strange wise, you know, uh, my family was a perverted one. They were very religious and at the same time, very criminal. And, uh, we were doing the Ramadan. My, we were doing the five prayers. I mean, not me because, you know, I said, I, I can't do this prayer. It doesn't make sense to me. Why does Allah create us as slaves? Why is it important for a God how many rakahs we do at prayer? Uh, that doesn't make sense. And if the Quran says you only have to pray two times, why does Muhammad say something else? And, you know, so I started investigating by myself. And when and in the mosque, the, I was writing, you know, notice about the surahs that I saw and asked the sheikh, like, uh, Sheikh, I don't understand. In school, they teach us history, also different religions. We didn't read the Bible, but they teach us, okay, when lived Moses? When lived uh, Jesus? And the Quran says, Virgin Mary is the sister of Aaron and Moses. 
And I went to the Sheer, I said, Sheer, that doesn't make sense. Uh, we learn in school that there is 1,500 years between Moses and Jesus. So how can she be the, the sister of Aaron? And, and the Sheer was like, no, 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 look, the Quran is right. The Jews, it's the invention of the Jews to change history. Uh, the Quran is always right. And I asked him also about the prayers. I said, why do we have to pray to East, to Mecca, to a building, to a black stone, and we are not pagans? Because only we laugh about the Christians because they worship this cross. We call them uh, uh, idol worshiper. We, we, we laugh about the Hindus, about the Buddhists, and we say we are the only true religion why it doesn't make sense i mean the earth is round so what do the people in australia do because they can't face mecca when you pray it's it's a it's a, it's a ball and also in ramadan i said what do the people in, in in north europe in alaska do when there is sometimes 30 days night when in winter for example so how do they he said, yes, they have to buy. I said, why did Allah did not know this? Why did he say you have to, to see the sunrise and, and, and the sunset? So many questions. And also I, when I read the surah about Maryam, where you know the Holy, Holy Spirit comes down and he became a beautiful man and it says he blew in her farjaha. And farjaha means, you know, the part between her legs. So in, in her vagina. And I was like, he blew in her vagina? Why? That doesn't make sense to me. That sound very, very sexual. And I asked the sheikh and he said, look, he, he showed me an, an ayah in the Almaida where it's written, uh, don't ask about stuff in the Quran that may disturb you. Just believe what is written, something like this. I think it's in the Ayah 5 in, in Al-Maida. And I was like, but that sounds also weird for me. It's like Allah telling me, don't question me, don't ask uh, questions because you maybe find out the truth. And you know, the Sheikh, he got so angry. He yelled in the face and uh, he contacted my father and he said yes your son I, i'm sure he is a yahudi he is a kafir i'm sure he has uh, yahudi friends jewish friends who are telling him this stuff it's not normal for a boy to know this and uh, you know there were so many stuff that i was like it it it, it blew my mind when i read for example that these words are the words of a noble prophet, which is also an ayah in Quran. I was like, wait a minute. So these are, and as a Muslims, we believe that it's Allah who is speaking in the Quran directly to you. So I was like, wait a minute. These are the words of a noble prophet that, that can't be true, that can't be. And also other stuff like, you know, Allah saying, if Muhammad will get killed or he will die like a normal die, and I was like, wait a minute, why does Allah not know if Muhammad will be killed or he will die a normal death? So, I know it was so many questions. I got really depressed and every time I was asking, they were just punishing me, they were beating me, they insulting me. And um, in the age of 13, it was so bad. I was so depressed. Um, that I committed suicide, you know. I went into my room and uh, I had nightmares like all of my family. We Every night we had nightmares of demons and uh, even so we were listening the whole day to Quran, we were reading the Quran and you know, I, I learned the Fatiha, I, I learned the Ayat al-Kursi and you know, you should speak this stuff to protect yourself and, and we were always saying Bismillah, Bismillah, well, Alhamdulillah. So when I was waking up from, from a bad dream, I was saying, Bismillah rahman rahim Bismillah rahman rahim and reading the Ayat al-Kursi, reading the Fatiha, but it didn't work. It, it became just worse. And so I committed suicide with 13. I cut my veins and I said, okay, it doesn't make sense to me. This is all, no one can answer my, my questions. Uh, the shades were running off from me. They were hiding from me. They were... Uh, punching me in the face, even sometimes spitting on me. And I said, 
I'm living, am I crazy or what is going on? And, and this is happening in Germany. In when Germany, you're, in Germany. Or, so at that time you were a teenager and before that. Yes. And then you go to a mosque in Germany and you're trying to ask questions, figure out what this Islam is. Uh, exactly. Just reading the Quran and you have some questions about this religion, about this book. And um, your mother tongue is Arabic, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. Lebanese, but it's Arabic Lebanese, of course. So you're reading the book called Quran, which is supposedly trying to guide you, you know, whatever. Uh, they call it truth, but there's no truth in it. But um, you're, you're, you're studying this, and then you have questions. If exactly. you ask your dad, he'll uh, beat you and punishes you severely. Yes. And then your brothers, you're, you're the youngest of the brothers, aren't you? Weren't you? No, I'm actually, um, you could say the middle, because I have uh, four, four older brothers and okay. two younger brothers. So you have big, big, large family. So yes. you're stuck in the middle. If you ask them, they're going to report you to the, to your dad and, and he's abusive and he's going to hurt you. So your mom suggests that we, we might need to go to a mosque and ask from the sheikh, exactly. the imam of the mosque, or let's call somebody in Lebanon. Maybe they might have the answers. But your parents didn't have the answer, did they? No, actually, even to the easiest questions, you know, I saw my mom, she had a carpet with a compass to know where East is. And I told her, Mom, I, that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, why is it so important if Allah is almighty, Allah is everywhere? Why? You're facing said, yeah, Mecca. Facing Mecca in the Qibla, you know, and I said, yeah, because our prophet said it, it, it's Sunnah and you have to follow it and you don't have to question it. And one day it was in school that really blew me off. And I, at that time, I didn't know so much about the Hadith because, you know, uh, you didn't have this uh, um, um, social media. You didn't have really Google to, to ask. So you needed the books. And someone told me, do you know that your prophet married a six-year-old girl and he was over 50 years? And I said, no, that's a lie. That can't be true. I don't believe this. So I went to my mother and I asked her, mom, is it true that our prophet really married a six-year-old girl? And she was very uncomfortable, my mom. She said, um, <laughs> well, you know, my son, at that time, girls became... Uh, women very early and it's because of the sun and and i was like mom that that's nonsense and she was like go ask the sheikh i don't want to talk about this and uh, it's 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 halal and allah made it halal it's written in quran and and you know the the sheikhs they didn't deny it they said yes it's true and it's halal and he, he's the prophet and it's uh, a woman, a girl with six years can be also ready to get pregnant. And, and I was disgusted. I was really shocked. And, you know, all that led me to really suicide because I couldn't stand it anymore. The hate of my family, the lies, the, the what I was living. And after my suicide, I, you know, became much calmer because, uh, my cousins, my dad was in the room and they were talking how to punish me after I leave the hospital. But the doctor said we have to keep him there for a few weeks. For and even my mom, she used to come to me, take, give me the money of my brothers who gave her, you know, like a few hundred uh, uh, Deutschmark, or sometimes even thousands. And she said, please, son, can you exchange it in the bank for me because your money is halal? <laughs> and I was like, mom, I don't think that works like this because haram is haram. I mean, it's from criminal activities. But, you know, I, I never really stopped talking about uh, the Quran. And later when I was introduced to, to Hadith and learned all the stuff about Muhammad, what he did, that he killed Jews. And, you know, they were so proud talking about, yes, he killed 700 Jews with his own hands. And, and he married uh, the wife of his own son. And later he created a surah which says adoption is illegal because blah, blah, blah. And I was 
and even read the stuff about uh, Aisha, who said, it's strange, every time Prophet Muhammad, you need something, it seems Allah sent uh, ayah a surah, which helps you. And that was weird for me, you know, I said, this can't be true. So I stopped believing in Muhammad. I said, he can't be a prophet. I stopped even believing in the Quran, but I still believed in Allah because I thought Allah is God. There must be a God. I know there is a God. And I think the first time I always wanted to read the Bible was, but I was so afraid because they told me, don't do it. The shaykh said, don't touch it. You know, it's corrupted and the Jews corrupted it. And if you read the Bible, demons will come to you. Demons will possess you. You're going to be a Kafir. You're going to be a Yahudi. So I never really, you can, as, a, as a Muslim, you can't ask question. And if you ask question, you're severely punished. Exactly. Even though you have just simple questions of why this is happening, why we should face Mecca, why Muhammad married a six years old, why, um, why would somebody kill 700 people with his own hand and claim to be a good person? Yes. I remember brother, uh, Yusuf, I remember that, um, I was talking to somebody uh, about this very issue. I said, you're a woman, you know, that at six years old, you're not ready at nine. You're not ready at 15. You're not even ready. You can make those decisions then. But, yes. um, this was, this was a Muslim woman, um, excuse for Muhammad. If Muhammad did it, it was right. Exactly. Like you're like, what kind of logic is that? So, because he was Muhammad or his name was Muhammad, he's right. No matter what he did, he said, yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. So you're going through all of this, asking questions, all of this causes you, uh, to say, there's no hope. This is, this life is too difficult, too stupid. This religion is too stupid. This family is harsh. I have no, I'm, I'm not receiving any respect, honor, love from this family. I'm out of here. So you cut your vein to, to kill yourself, but you survived the suicide. Yes, I survived. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks to my sister. She found me and, you know, I, I lost a lot of blood, but they were able to, uh, she called the ambulance and they were able to rescue me. And, um, after this, you know, I became calmer. I didn't ask so much anymore. And, uh, but I was really, really hungry to, for knowledge. I was hungry to know. Absolutely to know, you want to know what's going on. What's wh why am I here? What, what's going to happen to my life, to my eternal life, to afterlife. And then when you figure out what Islam is, you're just like, maybe, maybe this Muhammad stuff, this religion stuff is, but there is a God and might be Allah. And, um, you're going through all of this and and then at the in the in the back of your mind you're thinking i'm going to read the bible or read about some of the religions but because they have brainwashed you yes. systematically from childhood as a muslim that if you read this book some demons go, going to go in there um, uh, if the bible is corrupted if the genie will pop up uh, if you open the bible um so you you are afraid you, you also has have this fear that if I read the Bible, something evil is going to happen to me. Exactly. You, I was... you, you're living in evil and you want to get out of it, but that evil tells you other things are evil too. Yes. And the funny thing is I always know that like... folks, <laughs> it I is. Mean, if you don't see this, I don't know. What would you see? The religion is worse than an occult. It's totally fear based. It's just controlling you every layer of your life, every thought that you might come in your mind as a child, as a teenager, whatever, it's been already thought for you. And they're controlling you with this massive fear that even though your condition, your situation is absolutely hell on earth, it's terrible as a Muslim, but they tell you, if you want to get out of it, you might want to even experiment other religions. It's even worse if you go there. Exactly. If this is not occult, I don't know what it is. Yeah. If this is not satanic, I don't know what it is. If, if this is not, Islam is not diabolic, I don't know what it is. You, you know it's terrible, you, you're living it, 
you're punished severely. You can't figure this out. You can ask questions. They punish you. They, they beat you up. They control you, manipulate you. And now you want to get out of it. And they tell you already it's, it's worse out there. What could be worse than Islam? What yes. could be? What could possibly yes. be worse than Islam? But because it's satanic, Satan knew. So they have brainwashed you from childhood to control you and keep you in this occult. Please yes. continue. Yeah, so I think I was 20, maybe 21 when I, the first time I said, okay, I am a grown man. I have to read what is written in the Bible. I know everything in the Quran is not from God because it can't. And, you know, I went to the library, I opened the Bible and I didn't know anything about the Bible. And it's totally different to Quran. You have an order, it starts with Genesis and it, and it finished with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I was looking, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? You know, and then I found uh, a few. I, I think I read like one, two, maybe three pages and I was shocked. I was shocked and I closed it. I got afraid because not because of that, what I experienced, because it was totally different to the Quran. You know, I was reading words of, of love and the Quran, you never read something about love. Uh, like forgive your enemies and and even if they people persecute you don't persecute them back you know and i was like no this is totally different it was so beautiful but i was afraid that i closed the bible and i said no i this is totally different to what i have learned it's it doesn't even match a little bit with the with the islam and i stopped it i, had, I didn't read the bible anymore because it was so totally even so, I loved what I read there, but I was afraid. I, I can't tell you why. Maybe it was Satan who stopped me. So, but then what I did was I, you know, I told my sisters, I told my brothers, I told openly the people, I said, look, all the stuff about Muhammad, all the stuff about Quran, yes, there is a Allah, but it's all made up. It's nonsense. It's bullshit. And, you know, they started to persecute me again. And one day, I think I was... 26, 27, they called me uh, to the home of my mom and said, we have to talk to you. And um, so I went there and they said, yeah, we heard that you are talking bad about the Quran and about Muhammad. And I said, no, I'm just saying it doesn't match. It's uh, full of contradiction and failures and mistakes. It's not from Allah. I believe in Allah, but it is not from Allah. And, you know, they started to, to beat me heavily and punched me and... I was almost dying and one of my sisters, she called my older sister who I have helped to marry a German guy who later became a Muslim so that she can marry him. So she came, she picked me up and I, because I wasn't able to drive myself, you know, I was bleeding, I was blue and she said to me, she said, look, you are a kafir, you, are, you will go anyway to hell. So please uh, leave us alone and go to hell. And I was shocked because I helped her, you know, I protected my sisters any time. And that really broke my heart. And my mom told me, she said, look, my bro your brothers told me you have to leave the city or they will kill you because you have brought shame on us. So please leave the city. So I moved away from this uh, city far away and uh, I even changed my name for protection because the police said, yeah, yeah, we know your family, don't worry. And, we, you know, we know you are different. And I started a new life. And um, but without God, you know, I was still sometimes praying to Allah and, you know, the usual stuff like Bismillah. Uh, sometimes that's I was. What you knew. That's what you brought up. You didn't. If you had an alternative, I promise you, you would have not done it. But that's what you wanted to uh, call out to God to help you in your situations, which is a totally what we have been created. We know there is a. Um, uh, we need help in many situations, and we need a much bigger help than uh, uh, there the, are the situations that are much much bigger than our power, our strength, our, and we needed God to help. And in your context at this moment was Allah. Yes. So you, out of desperation, you called out and then tell us what happened. So 
I started a new life. I was uh, really successful, but I was empty. You know, I I had a luxury apartment. I had a company. I had lots of money, and I had lots of friends, of course, because I had lots of money. But everything, you know got broke i i lost my money i lost my company my relationship got broke my health was really terrible uh i had so much pain and the whole time headache and i didn't know why because i was like i'm i'm asking allah i was praying but it didn't help and so i was forced you know to go bankrupt and uh, at that time i needed every week direct injections into my spin bones or backbone, how do you call it? So that I could at least Fine. sit. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that I could walk. It was very heavy medicine because without that, I couldn't even sit. Everything was, was hurting me. My, even my hair was hurting me. I was so empty, so depressed, you know, I had so much hate and anger inside me for my family, for my friends who left me and I didn't know what to do. I had to, to leave my luxury apartment and go into a tiny apartment. And it was on my birthday. And uh, I was sitting in my sleeping room, you know, and uh, the next injection for my backbone was still a few days uh, in the future. And I was really crying in myself, you know, I don't know what to do. And at that time, I went on my knees. It was on my birthday. Can you imagine? I was alone, full of pain, depressed. And I said, but this time, for the first time, and usually I was always talking, you know, when I pray to Allah in Arabic, I said in German, uh, bitte Gott hilf mir, um, please God help me. If you are real, I believe in you, but please help me. I don't know what to do. God help me. I did not say Allah this time. And a few days later, after I got my injection in my uh, backbone so I could stand, you know, I was trying to, to paint the wall because it was a very ugly apartment. I was trying to, to paint the wall, listening to, to uh, American pop music. And I have banned everything Arabic in my life, you know, like movies, music. I even stopped talking except the prayers i stopped talking to any people in arabic because i didn't want this i hated it and while i was painting my 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 hands full of color suddenly the music changed and the guy started to talk in arabic and i was like hey what is this and uh, i went down from the ladder to change it but i couldn't change it so fast because my hands were full of color so i would have to touch my ipad and the guy was sitting on a hill around him people and he was talking words i have never heard before it was the sermon on the hill of jesus christ in arabic and you know i wanted to change it but i couldn't i was listening and this words was so powerful it, you know it, it something you know my whole body i had goosebumps something came down on me in my heart and you have to know I, have, I was full of hate, full of anger, full of frustration. And at the end, you know, it, it ends like, blessed are those who are persecuted for rightness. rightness? It's so, such a hard word. Righteousness. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. And who are persecuted because, you know, they follow the, the, the good. And, and it was what happened to me. And I was, I started crying like I never did since years, you know, everything. And I was shaking like this. But after that, I, I stood up and I was transformed. I was changed. The hate was gone. Even the pain, you know, my hair was hurting before it was gone. And can you imagine, after this, I didn't need any more any injections into my spin bone. And I forgot to mention that also, I, I received a message from the doctor that they found a brain tumor, a very slowly growing brain tumor in my brain. And they told me, yes, we are not sure, maybe 
you can become like 90 years old with this tumor and don't die, but in a few months we have to check it. But from that day on, you know, everything changed in me. And I, and I was so happy, you know, that I posted it on, 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 on social media. I posted it in my WhatsApp status and I called even the friends who didn't call me anymore. I said, Jesus is real. He is real. He talked to me. And he said, what? What are you talking about? Are you gone crazy? And I was like, no. And they, everyone saw, you know, the change. I was laughing again. I was a totally different person. I was, I was happy. I was strong. I was healthy. And so I decided, I said, I want to get baptized as fast as I can. So, and I want to go to, to Israel. I want to go to Jerusalem. I want to get baptized where our Lord was. So I contacted, you know, a few um, uh, Muslim Christians. You said before you move on, I just yeah. want to recap what you said for the people that are watching. And it's such a powerful thing. For years, Yusuf cried out to Allah. For years, for years, he called oh, the name man. of Allah and it was nothing. Zilch, nada, nothing. Exactly. And one time I just one time he called God, God in his uh, in, in in German language one time he called him and so God, it was all needed it, it was just this one sentence it's you amazing, know amazing folks it's amazing you hear that this Allah caused him nothing but headaches nothing but pain and suffering and persecution and hatred hopelessness this Allah of the Quran caused him nothing nothing but that but one time he called the name of god and look what has happened it and is amazing what a powerful story i'm i'm getting blessed brother i'm just i just need to people to know that for years it was nothing but hopelessness yes and one time you called the name of god and jesus shows up miraculously via your YouTube, whatever channel you were watching, somebody, he was sitting on the hill, this, he was uh, preaching the Sermon of um, ser sermon on the Mount in your language, in your mother tongue, which is Arabic, Arabic yes. and you heard it, and everything is start changing because you heard the power of the word of the living God. It's all amazing. My all, Tell us. Every, you know, all my nightmares disappear. I never had again nightmares. Can you imagine all my life since childhood, me and all my brothers, my, my parents, we had nightmares of demons. It all gone. It's all gone. And, you know, I felt so powerful. And I went out to tell everyone, yes, I want to become a Christian. I want to I wanna confess Jesus is God. He is real. And I even forgot, you know, about my brain tumor. I said, no, I want to go to Jerusalem. I want to get baptized. But, you know, every time I, I called uh, uh, an Arab uh, Christian priest and told him I'm ex-Muslim, they were afraid. Oh, sorry, sorry, we can't do this. So, and, but still, I went to Jerusalem and I talked to some priests. But when I told them I'm, I'm an ex-Muslim, they were like, oh, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. We don't have time. It took me almost two years, I think, or maybe even three years. But brother, if you would have called me and if you would have got I a didn't hold of me, you. it would have taken 30 seconds. Yes. I would At hear your time, testimony. I would hear your confession that Jesus is Lord and Savior. And that would be it. I would Abdu, I would baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then you'll be entering. Yes, Just but I didn't know. I didn't, what a I really didn't testimony. know that there are ex-Muslims or channels. You know, everything came later, and uh, so I was in Jerusalem. I came back. You know, I touched the stone where he, they laid him uh, to feel his energy, to feel. And when I touched the stone, something came into me. And I felt, you know, very dizzy when I tried to stood up and I was like, what is going on with me? No one believed me this. He said, are you, you are talking nonsense. This is, and I was like, really believe me. I touched the stone where he was laid on to wash him. And 
So I came back to Germany and still wasn't baptized. I contacted here German priest. I told him I want to get baptized. Everyone said, yeah, it takes time. You have to go to, to church school. And uh, if you are an ex-Muslim, we have blah, blah. But anyway, then there was this surgery. They told me, uh, yeah, unfortunately, your brain tumor grow in a few months, like a centimeter. So we have to, to take it out now because it could kill you in a few months. And But I wasn't afraid. I said, you know what? I don't care. If I die, I will be with Jesus. And I prayed to Jesus. I said, please, God, dear Jesus, if it's your will to heal me, heal me. And if it's your will that I can come to you, take me to you. And I had this surgery. And um, after three hours, you know, my two of my friends visited me and uh, I stood up from the bed and I was like, okay, I want to go home. And the nurse was, what is going on here? I said, I'm fine. I want to go home. And you know, I still have this scar here. Like they opened up my head because it was a very heavy surgery. They said it took like, I don't know, 10 hours or something. And I said, no, I'm fine. I can, I can watch. She said, no, it's impossible. Usually you have to stay at least three days in bed and we have to be sure and i was you know i had all these cables and this stuff here and there and i was like no you can take it up i want to go home i'm fine and she said no 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 no. We, we can't do this so they kept me there three days and everyone was wondering how is it possible after such a heavy surgery three hours after the surgery you stood up and you want to go home and i said our lord jesus christ can do everything and, you know, then it took like, from the first time where I had my experience with Jesus, it took like, I think, two, three, two and a half years. So a Catholic priest told me, okay, I, I can baptize you, but you have to come for one month to visit our uh, church school so that we are sure you know what Christianity is. And I said, okay, no problem. I just want to get baptized. And I visited uh, so uh, for one month, uh, the church school and uh, on Eastern, I got baptized. It was a special Eastern um, in April and 600 people, you know, I was not the only one who converted. There was another Muslim who also became Christian. And in front of 600 people, I, you have to say, yes, uh, I refute the devil. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my savior. And I said it three times in front of all the people. And it was such an amazing feeling to say, yes, now I am baptized. Now I'm really part of Jesus. Um, but that was, of, co of course, uh, not good for my family. <laughs> so um, they, one of my friends, a Lebanese, uh, without intention, you know, he posted it on, on on Instagram with my name. So they knew where I live and they knew what my name now is. And they contact me uh, through social media. They say, yeah, we know where you live and we're gonna come and we're gonna kill you. You are an infidel, you are a kafir, Yahudi, Yakel. Um, so it became dirty again. And uh, I had to change my name again for security reasons uh, to protect me and my, my friends, my beloved ones. But, you know, I, t I said to myself, uh, I don't want to run anymore from anyone. And uh, I'm in love with Jesus. I even started to learn the, the prayers in Aramaic because I want to feel more connected to him. Of course, I know he speaks every language, uh, not only Aramaic, but for me, it's special to hear uh, our Father in heaven in, in Aramaic. It's, it fills my heart because it's also a bit connected, you know, to the Arabic language. It's more, um, how do you say it, familiar to me than if I, if I say it in German or in Latin. And so uh, what I was doing through all this time, I was... Uh, talking to other Lebanese, to other Muslims, you know, telling them my story and telling 
them also the mistakes and failures. And uh, of course, you can imagine mostly I received threats, insults. Uh, sometimes they spit on me. But I said, no, I don't worry. No. Um, now I get a bit calmer because I said, okay, maybe I don't want to, you know, beat up, uh, going to be beat up again every month. But still, you know, um, I'm, how do you say, I'm still active on, on, on social medias like Twitter or, or Instagram. And I post the truth, you know, when Muslims say, no, we have the true religion. I tell them, you know, how comes that in, I think it's, uh, I think it's Surah 9, which Muslims always translate inten intentionally wrong, where it's written, they took their monks and rabbis uh, as lords instead of Allah and the Messiah, the son of Mary. You know, so it says clearly, it says clearly that Allah and Jesus are the Lord. And they always translate it differently. They put Jesus with the monks or they put Jesus like, and Jesus also is not God. And I was like, why do you do this? Because usually, as Muslims, we say, if you change only one word of Quran, you have to be punished with death. That is the penalty of changing the Quran. And I expose, you know, I try to expose their lies to, to say, no, this is not what is written in Arabic. And Arabic is my language. Don't tell me I did not understand because I always say, no, 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 no. You don't understand Arabic. No, you uh, you can't translate. I said, yes, you can. And th that's the correct translations. And They might, Brother Yusuf, they might tell an Iranian or a Pakistani or an Afghan Muslim or an American Muslim or a German Muslim that you don't know Arabic or you cannot. You, yes. You, but how, how could they tell a Lebanese? How could they tell, yeah. for example, a brother from Saudi Arabia? A Christian in Saudi Arabia, like Christian Prince or anybody else was out there that that's, that's their mother tongue. This mm -hmm. is what it uh, this is what it says in Arabic, and you mistranslate it, and you know you did, because this is what it not what what not it says, and they can get away with the uh, Arab ex-Muslim that yeah. they could get uh, away with other um, ex-Muslims. But thank God for your testimony. What a powerful, powerful testimony. And God, you, God brought you out of the kingdom of darkness. Truly, he has. You Amen. were bound by this Islamic uh, um, um, rituals, religion. With this, You were bound to the God of Islam as a slave. He punished you. There was no reward. There was no eternal life in it. There was no hope and none of that. And then you just call the name of the Lord and he really rescued out of that um, one question i have which is very common of course um, in the islamic world um, uh, when, when when we were muslim growing up we dealt with a lot of witchcraft in the family yes did you experience any of that there's a lot i don't know if people know this but there's so much so much islamic witchcraft islamic sorcery so much um uh, weird things that Muslims do to receive this baraka or yes. these uh, demons or these uh, bad genies, leave them alone. But um, exactly. uh, the, uh, it's very superstitious religion, generally. For example, I remember, um, uh, Brother Youssef, when, when we wanted to, for example, go as a family in Iran, we wanted to go out uh, to someone's home. And then if you're walking out of the door and you sneeze, we had to go through all of the chapters of the Quran and stop at the door because uh, Allah is trying to tell us something and we need to protect. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's yeah, so yeah. much superstition. Like when you enter the, enter the bathroom, be sure that you go with the right leg. And when you exit the bathroom and when you eat and when you wipe up your ass, it has to be... Uh, the left hand, not the right hand, and, and all the stuff. And I remember also, you know, because we had also nightmares of demons, etc. Sometimes we, my brothers went to the sheikh and he was making, uh, I think they were calling them hijab or something. So special recitations of Quran and you have to wear it on your arm. So it, to protect you against uh, demons, against witchcraft. 
And uh, they were telling me always, be careful. The Jewish witchcraft is the most powerful witchcraft. Not even Mohammed was able because he was suffering six months of Jewish witchcraft where he got crazy and he was imagining sleeping with his wives, but he didn't. And so uh, the Jewish witchcraft is the most powerful, most evil witchcraft. And and you know many other stuff like uh, also these special prayers like istikhara. If you want to have a, if you want something from Allah, you have to make an istikhara. Did your Quran uh, had uh, good, bad, evil in it, or good, bad, neutral that you had to open it? Oh, I think in this decision I should do good. Or yeah. we di we did it with the uh, beats. You remember good, bad, neutral, good, bad, neutral. Hours mm -hmm. of this, and then it. It is so much witchcraft, sorcery, uh, superstitious in an Islam that if you would just know it, you would know this is absolutely diabolic religion. Yeah. You just would know it. It's a diabolic occult. It has exactly. nothing to do with Abrahamic faiths or anything of that. It's such an anti-Abrahamic faith. I remember, brother, when, um, when we had bad nightmares or if somebody was pregnant uh, in the family, they would put a piece of metal on, uh, uh, under their pillow because mm. uh, somehow the genies were scared of metal and it would uh, repel them. I mean, it is absolute nonsense. But all over the world, Muslims practice it. All over the world. Yeah. They're my, practicing my, it. Um, mom used go, to, go ahead. My mom used to, you know, to, to throw little black seeds under our beds to protect us against demons. Uh, I think it was sesame or basilicum. I don't I remember what it was. It was black little seeds, and she, it protects you against uh, demons. Yeah, little seeds. Little L seeds. Little little physical th seeds. It's gonna protect you from spiritual darkness. Exactly. It's incredible. What a powerful testimony. I just want to remind our viewers all over the world. Please, please out of compassion, reach out to Muslims, pray for them, give them a New Testament, give them a Gospel of John, send them a video, do something about it. Mm -hmm. It's, if somebody would have reached out to my brother long before his encounter to the Lord, he would have not suffered as much. Yes. And somebody reached out to me one day, a friend, a good friend, saw how, what, 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 what type of punishment I would put my body through to receive some, to earn some sort of um, approval from God. And none of it happened until I heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I heard that I am approved, I am beloved because of what Jesus has done for me. He has washed away my sins, my condemnation. He paid for it on that cross. He paid for it. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Isn't be isn't Christianity beautiful? What Jesus has done for us? Out of his mercy and goodness and love, he paid our debt. He was punished for our sake that we might not be punished. And there's a lot of people around you. I promise you they're going through those punishments because of they have not heard yet that punishment was put upon Jesus on that cross. Exactly. Please do something about it. Please reach out to a Muslim, pray for him, lay your hand on him. I have so many, we have, we have shared on this very channel, so many testimonies of Muslims receiving one prayer from a Christian. Some, some Christian lay hand on him and prayed for him, for their healing, for their peace. And all of all, the course of their life is absolutely changed. Somebody heard the gospel and the course of their life, the destiny absolute destiny of Yusuf was changed because of one sermon, one preaching on YouTube or on a channel changed his life. Please do something about it. Let's, let, let us not only he, be hearer of the word, listeners of, to the word, but actually doing what God has for us. Brother Yusuf, what do you have for us um, to close this powerful testimony in this hour, what would be your uh, encouragement to the Christians or Muslims watch this program from all over the world? What would you say to them? My encouragement for the Christians is please read the gospel and 
get teached by people who know the gospel so that you can answer if someone asks you about Jesus, because many Christians don't know the answers. Mm -hmm. And to my Muslim brothers, please use your brain. Don't be afraid. Go read with your eyes, not just with your lips. Experience the truth and ask questions. Why, how can this be possible that there are so many mistakes in the Quran if it's Allah himself who is talking? Because God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make contradictions. So use your brain, read, ask questions and read the Bible. It will open your eyes. Absolutely. Folks, you heard it once again. Another powerful testimony from a Muslim coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, exiting out of Islam to Christianity. And my goodness, it, with God, it always gets better. It's always, it always gets better because it's a good God. It's a loving and kind God. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you share this uh, program with anybody everywhere on social media.